time now, 9.41, Thursday morning. Well, at least I think it's Thursday. Somebody in Old is for his Friday today. I'll tell you that, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, overnight, it did Warminster last night. I got up to Warminster. I uh, got unloaded. Oh, and they were pretty quick in there. But they normally are when they're wanting to go home. So I was there, got there four hours late. Supposed to be there at 12, I got there at 4. And they were done by about half 5. No, done by just after 5. So they were pretty rapid. Um, but they were good as gold. They were, you know, really helpful, helped me back in and get the truck in. Because it was quite awkward to get in there. And it was on a real cat, I was on an incline. So anyway, we had, that was the job done. Uh, so I parked in Warminster last night because I knew I didn't have a, I didn't really have enough time to get back down to Southampton, so I, t I just stayed in Warminster. So there's services there, and it's on the back of it's a moto, it's a moto branched up as a moto services. So I get in there, and it's I know it's not a, a good one, <coughs> but come on, I know it's not a good one, but you still expect certain amenities, especially when you're paying money for them. So, I get in there just after, no, I got in there just after six, uh, quarter past five, I think it was, quarter past half past five. And, uh, I get in there, the spa shop, the spa shop is closed, Greg's is closed, which, you know, not unusual, but, you know. Um, so the only thing, place to get food was uh, Burger King, Shit. Um, so I then had to go. So where do I pay? Oh, you got to go around to where the BP garage is. So trundle around to the BP garage. Oh, I go in and use the toilet to start off with. They were minging, and the showers were locked. So I go into the uh, into the BP garage, and they had the shelves were bare. There was nothing in there. There wasn't even a sandwich on the shelf or a sausage roll. There was nothing in there. So Chris or chocolate. That was it. So I said to the girl behind the counter, I said, uh, pay for truck parking. She said, yeah, no problem. I said, uh, what happened to the toilets and the showers then? Oh, oh, yeah, 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 they're locked up. What do you mean they're locked up? Can you get a shower then? No, they're locked. Right, okay. So and I saw on the door there that, the, that everything shuts at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Everything, yeah. So you've got no access to the toilets. Yeah, correct. So hang on a minute. I should yeah, but there's a there's a portaloo outside. A portaloo? I'm paying 40, 14 quid to shit in a oh, no, it's, I didn't say that, but do you know what I mean? That's the that's the that's the idea behind it. I'm paying I know it's only 14 quid, but it's cheap. But it's not even secure parking by their own admission it's not secure. So I am not exactly sure what I'm paying moto for. Because that's just absolute robbery. Ser no services, because there isn't any, and everything's shut at 10, and, I'd, and, the, and it's a port loo, you're having a laugh. So, uh, uh, that's what we have to put up to as truck drivers. And expect to swallow that. But I did have a quiet night's sleep, so uh, it was all right. Probably because no fucker uses it. There aren't many trucks in there. There's a few in there this morning, not many of us. But our company likes us to use services, it helps on insurance. If you get broken into or get your diesel nicked and you're not in you're not in services, then uh, I don't know, it's a weird one. So anyway, down to Southampton onto the docks. <coughs> you have to have a book it's a booking number, booking system. <coughs> so I punch in my number. Not valid. What do you mean it's not valid? Yeah, you're supposed to be in a mile. What? Like, travel into the future. To get a box off for the day for delivery. Yeah. <laughs> well done. So, a quick phone call. That got swapped about. Um, on and off the docks in about an hour 20, which, isn't too, which is very good, actually. Very good indeed. Quite happy with that, with uh, two boxes. Box off, box on. It helped that I was in the same slot for both of them. 
so that saves a lot of time. And then uh, I'm heading towards. Uh, uh, oh, where am I heading towards? Telford. Telford. I knew it began with a T. Heading towards Telford. And I'm currently on the A419. I've come up the A34, across the M4, and up through the A419 across Birdlip Hill. Well, down it. And then onto the M5 and then up in that way. There isn't a lot in it. Or you can carry on going up the M40 and M42 and across the M6. But it's six and a half a dozen. But I quite like this way. Makes a nice change. So, uh, out to Telford to tip for 12 o'clock. Should be there, there or thereabouts. Yeah, and then head back down the road again. I don't know how far I get back. Again, it depends on how long it takes to tip. Might take an hour, might take five hours, who knows. Either way, I shall probably be stopping somewhere on the way back down. There's a very good chance of that. Not sure where. Again, depends on the time. But uh, they'll be cutting some trees down here, look. The roads are just so shitty at the moment. It's unbelievable. My truck is in full wooden spec. Absolutely covered in shit. I could hose it down today and it'd be um, shit bound 24 hours later. So it might get done tomorrow if I get back. If not, it might get hosed either down Saturday morning or uh, Sunday morning if I'm running out. That's the plan. So anyway, this is the 419. I like this road. Pretty little road. There's views out across, there's some nice views. And I don't come along it that often, so it's quite nice for a change. You know, most of my journeys seem to be M3 up to London, round the M25, either north or south. You get onto the M1 or go down to Kent or Gateway or something like that. Or I'm heading up the A, uh, A34, uh, M40, and I'm either heading on up towards Birmingham that way, up the M40, or I'm heading across towards the M1, A43 and M1 and north. So, um, heading west is a, is a nice change. We've got a different, we've got some different contracts now, so uh, it'd be interesting to see the sort of places we go to. Um, yesterday was a new one for me. Day before, I think I've been to uh, been to the places before. Went to the place uh, certainly in Washington when I was up there. I've been there before. Uh, today. I'm pretty, I'm 99.9% .9 certain I've been there before. So, uh, yeah, no, it's all, all, uh, all good. I've, <laughs> I've been looking at TikTok again. It's almost like, it's almost like you're drawn into it, aren't you? I, there's, I don't know whether it's just the filters that I've got on mine or, or, the, or the algorithms that I've seen to have weirdly hit upon. I watched someone yesterday. There's a woman, she had a big microphone in front of her and she had it covered in sellotape and she was making all prickly noises with it. Like, I don't know why well, I can't even describe the noise, but it was just all prickly, crackly noises. But the thing was, there was over a thousand people watching it. What the fuck is all that about? And then, <laughs> and then another one, it was covered in shaving foam. It was <laughs> Oh my word. Have I just, like, <clears throat> there's, there's definitely a glitch in the Matrix. I stumbled through a door. I don't know if you've ever watched the Matrix films, but I'll keep referring back to it. But there, I, I reckon I, 
I reckon the key maker opened that door for me. I went into it and it was like, fucking, this is weird. This is a weird place this is. Oh no, it's perfectly normal here. We put a microphone, cover it in sellotape and then fucking cover it in shaving foam and whisper. She wasn't even talking loud. She was whispering. <laughs> it just cracks me up. What is all that about? I know there's, I know there's some people with some like kinky old fetishes going on, but I've never heard of that one. You know, jeez. <laughs> oh my god, it's car crash, isn't it? It is car crash. <clears throat> I tell you what, if you've only got 20 minutes to kill and you've got absolutely nothing else to do. It's worthwhile going and having a look through and scrolling through to see what's happening on TikTok Live. I wouldn't say it's educational in any way, shape or form, but it's, um, well, I don't know, I don't know, I don't even know what it is. I know I keep talking about it, but it's just absolutely mental. So anyway, I'll put a couple of videos out, they're only really short ones, about all the shitty places that I park in. Um, and that's probably what I'll do. Because apparently you've got to have a thousand subscribers or something like that before you can go live. So I can't go live because I've only just joined it. I think I've got ten weirdos following me. And I've followed a load of weird people as well. Purely and simply because, well, I don't know, weird. Um, you press a button, don't you? And half the time you don't even know you're following them. I look through and I thought, Christ. Not quite sure why I'm following them. But you've got to start somewhere, so... No, absolutely bizarre. I think I followed them because they were, you've followed me, and I thought, oh, I'll just be polite and follow them back, but they end up being weird. Oh, I don't know, I don't, so I just left it there. I don't know. The whole the whole experience is um slightly bizarre. Anyway, I'm on the 419, heading north. It's north, northwest, really. I've had a break, so I shouldn't need to stop unless my bladder explodes. And if it does, that'll be too late. Uh, what else do I know that's new? Nothing really. I've got to book another CPC course. Bloody hell. Should really get on and do that. I've been really lax. I don't know where this week's gone. It's Thursday. It is. This week has absolutely flown by. Now some days drag, but this week has is gone by rapidly. Kiwi foods are still keeping me asleep. I know gorgeous Kira, she tried to keep me through, it had no effect whatsoever. I told her to up her dosage. So we'll see if she, I, I haven't spoke to her yet. So uh, we'll find out later whether she did actually take two kiwi fruit and see if that did the trick. these roads are shit banged. Had a brake light. <clears throat> you, know, I, you know I said about there was a there every now and again I get a brake light fault and I go back and test the brakes and there's nothing wrong with them. Okay, right. So I went into the Merc garage and I said, still getting this but the last time I was in there, I've got this brake light fault that comes up on the dashboard but the brake lights are all working. Oh, okay, we'll take another look at that. So <clears throat> I picked the truck up last time it was in for service and the problem appears to have been solved because I haven't had the warnings saying that I've had a brake light. However, I was told yesterday I've got a brake light out. <laughs> but there's nothing, to, so I think they've totally knocked the, knocked the whole fucking lot off. So, now it's gone the other extreme that it, when I have a brake light bulb go, it won't even tell me. So um, I swapped that out this morning. I always carry spares with me. I keep a spare set of everything. Um, yeah, it's just, 
Whereas my near side one, you know, I could have waited until I got back and then got the trailer boys out to have a look over the weekend, but it's a bulb. You should be able to change a bulb yourself. You ain't a trucker if you can't even change a bulb. Well, in the bad old days, you were changing tyres and shit, but you don't really get involved in that too much today. Well, you don't get involved in it. It's too fucking dangerous. You know, we don't, we don't have a jack on board, we don't even have a spare. We don't carry spares. String get covered covered in shit, but I've got to leave it until it gets really dirty. Otherwise I'll be running out of washing liquid. I've got another five litres in there, I've got about ten litres actually in the truck, but um, use it sparingly. So anyway, that's enough of me waffling on. I've been going for about 15 minutes now, and um, unfortunately for you, this is just where it starts getting a bit nicer. It's trying to brighten up. We might even see a bit of sunshine. Yesterday afternoon, we did. See, I did see sunshine from about lunchtime onwards. It was actually quite nice. So the 419 goes off down in the Strad now. Siren Sester. And I think this swaps over to the 417 now. I don't think it's a road that's really um, really used that much. I think if more people knew about it or understood the road, I think it would get used a lot more because it cuts all the Bristol out. And for the most part, it's a it's a pretty good road. There's about a three, four mile stretch, I suppose, that once you get to the top of the hill and you drop down into Birdlip, and then after Bird, going down Birdlip Hill, and then that, it's still dual carriageway again, so, or two lanes. It's only one little stretch, it's a pain in the arse. dinner tonight. Bloke on a motorbike coming up. He's getting covered in shit today. God. It's, it's the spray off the road. Because they've been salting the roads, it just, it's just blackness that comes up. You get absolutely filthy. I say it's not raining. Oh, stop yawning. I got a good seven hours worth of kip last night, which is good going for me. Sorry, sorry, sorry. A Roman, what was it? You saw it. Oh, it's capital of the Cotswolds. Stayed at a really nice pub up in the Cotswolds once. Took the caravan up there. It was a few years back. And it was the Nor a pub called the Norman Knight. And I can't remember where it was, but it was the Norman Knight. And they got a little camp, or they had a little campsite out of the back. It's out in the middle of nowhere in this little village. Full of, full of, but they did amazing food. And they had a French chef. Well, on our first night, absolutely bladdered in the pub. And I think we drank them out of gin, if I remember rightly. And I don't remember paying for too much either. Um, which was even, which even better. We had a lock in. And it was just mad, it was mad locals. And um, we said we'd eat in there the next night, on a Saturday night. So, Saturday morning, I'm sort of pottering about, we weren't doing much. 
and the chef's out picking blackberries out there. And I said, oh, I said hello to him. We were just chatting away and he was French. And I said, oh, it's lovely to see someone picking out of the garden for what they're going to use, what you're going to make. And he told me, and we were chatting away and he said, um, have you looked at the menu? And I said, yeah, look, 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 looked at the menu. You're eating in tonight. He said, oh, because I've got on really well with a bloke, a really nice bloke. He says, I'll cook you something special now. I said, it won't be on the menu. I, says, I said, well, leave it under you then. You crack on. <clears throat> and um, we had starter, main course, and a dessert. <laughs> we were just, I just looked after so well. The chef would, you know, everyone else had waiter service, but I had the chef coming out. And he came out, and I can't even, I think I had duck, ended up having duck. But they couldn't fathom that. There was other diners there going. You could see them looking across. And they realised that, it was like, why, why is the chef bringing your food out? And, and they could see that, I mean, duck has its own own look, doesn't it? You know, it's, it's not like the rest of the menu. And uh, it was just funny to see the locals all looking across and uh, people are dining there regularly going, where did they get that from? And why is this why is the chef with them food? Who are they? Cracking night though. Ah, another lock in. That was really good. And the one far from Stratford upon Avon. See, this is nice. All these all these rocks are crumbling. Look, They're all crumbling. The frost gets be all the, the lighter bits is where the the frost gets into the sandstone and uh, cracks off the front bit. Bit of a bridge, not that you can see too much, I don't think. Well, we've got some pipe on that one. Okay, yeah, you can see this stone if you can see it. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still coughing. And I still haven't got a lot of smell. Now we cooked about another roast on Sunday. It's a lot of roast. Couldn't smell a bloody thing. Ridiculous. Air freshness, can't smell it. You know, I just, just. I mean, out of all your senses, I suppose smell is the one that if you had to give one up, I reckon smell would be it because, you know, I'd rather be able to taste than smell. Daglingworth. I do like that name. They've got some good names around here. Daglingworth. Baggenden and Perrot's Brook. Who is Perrot? I used to know a Perrot. They lived over this well and well, they lived in Bristol. So he might have originally come from around here. He might have had a, his great grandfather might have had a brook named after him. I lost touch with a bloke. He was a good mate as well. We joined up together and I, he's one of the few that we've never really um, been able to pin down. Every now and again somebody comes out of woodwork, 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 woodwork. But we found one bloke recently and that was by pure chance. I think I might have said it before. I've got a mate who lives up um, sort of Chippenham Way, and uh, he got divorced a couple of years ago and he decided to get back into it and uh, went on a, a dating site. Met this girl in Swindon, he was a, he was a teacher. And uh, one, of the, one of the things that Gorgeous Kira always, always says when we first met, I talked a lot about my time in the army, and there's one particular bloke. And uh, because there's so many funny stories about it, uh, and it, they're just really they're, 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 they're funny. So anyway, obviously Jim <laughs> has the same script as me, and uh, and uh, was telling her about this this bloke, and she started going a bit pale in the face, and uh, she sort of like said, uh, what, "What was his name again?" So clarified the name. Where's he come from? Oh, Cornwall. And 
And that's his name. Yeah. She said, I work with him. You work with him. We've lost him for years trying to find him. We've lost him. We couldn't find him. And it, and it was just pure good. So we're all back in touch again now. So it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Oh dear. It's a small world, isn't it? It's a small world. Oh, now it's starting to rain. Fucking hell. That's all we need. Cleans the screen, though. Ish. I didn't think it was going to rain today. Well, that's another 10 minutes added on. Um, so, that is enough. I'm going to go. This is a nice, let's say, nice little area around here. Quite like it. Nice drive through. And, uh, yeah, that's a, that's about it, really. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to put you one going down bird lip. It gets a bit, I've got no weight on the back. I've got a 40 foot box with no weight in it. I think it's about 8 or 9 tonne. There's nothing in it. I don't know what is, what's in it. Well, I do know what's in it, but obviously I can't say. Um, but there's no weight at all in it. Uh, tracker. Okay, we've got to time this right. We've got a car coming up. Come on. Get past me. And then we've got nothing else behind us. Oh, here we have. We've got a car tucked right on the arse. What is he, what's he doing that for? Well, at least the tractor's got some flashing lights going on, look. It's got lights and lights on and flashing lights. Sensible man. <coughs> Ugh, weather. Well, like I say, cleans the screen off. It might wash a bit of shit off the truck. Doubtful. I've got a visor on the front of the truck that's like smoked. Um, it's uh, semi see through, but it's got that smoky effect on it. It's like a sun visor. And uh, it's on the outside of the truck. And it's just black. It's not even smoky anymore. It's the highway man. Anyway, that's enough. I'll speak to you all later.